This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. I was dug in at a little hotel on Rust Street, just across the river from the Loop, the first time I saw Patricia Colombo's picture. It was in the Tribune and showed a pretty but strained nineteen-year-old girl with a jungle of streaked, dark, blondish hair entering a funeral home, with a handsome man referred to only as her unidentified escort. The Tribune story was written by a reporter named Mitchell Lowson. A nice piece of writing, I thought. She summoned the strength to kneel at the three caskets, her entire family. Patricia Colombo was the only one left of the Frank Colombos of Elk Grove Village, a family that was described as ideal neighbors. The nineteen-year-old entered the Galewood Funeral Home, 1857 North Harlem Avenue, and greeted relatives, friends, and acquaintances with a weak smile. Asked if she was ready to go into the chapel, she said quietly, I don't want to, but I have to. She knelt at the matching slate-gray coffins that held the remains of her father, Frank, forty-three, her mother, Mary, forty, and her brother, Michael, thirteen. The three were slain sometime last Tuesday in their home at 55 East Brantwood, but their bodies were not discovered by police until Friday afternoon. Authorities say they had been bludgeoned, stabbed as many as forty or fifty times, shot in the head, and had their throats slit. Mrs. Columbo was raped. Patty looks like Mike, murmured one relative, watching the grim procession proceed from casket to casket. I don't know, I don't know, muttered many of the men. The Reverend J. Ward Morrison, pastor of the Queen of the Rosary Catholic Church in Elk Grove Village, said he knew of no occasion that was sadder in his thirty-two years in the priesthood. The Columbos had attended his church for eleven years. Meanwhile, police continued their search for the killers. Elk Grove Village investigators were stationed inside and outside the chapel, checking with acquaintances for any strangers that may have been present. The latest theory is that a gang of professional home invaders may have been high on narcotics when their robbery turned into the torture and killing spree. Home invaders? When had insanity like that begun? Burglars I knew went into homes to steal, not slaughter. And they never used drugs while they were working. Later that evening I caught a television news update on the story. Bodies were discovered late Friday afternoon on a routine police call regarding a missing automobile. The cause of death of the three victims, which was not immediately apparent, has now been determined as gunshot wounds to the head, although all three also had their throats cut and were badly mutilated about the body. Investigating officers told reporters that the interior of the home looked like a slaughterhouse at Chicago's south side stockyards. Widespread speculation among law enforcement personnel is that the killings are the result of a home invasion type of crime, such as the Manson cult began in 1969 and the murders of Green Beret Dr. Jeffrey McDonald's family a year later. Such crimes are becoming less and less uncommon in America having been reported in recent years in Oklahoma, Georgia, California, Virginia, and Texas. I looked at the Trib picture again, at the pretty young face under the jungle of hair, the wide, dark eyes, the discernibly tall, slim figure. Nineteen years old, I thought. You're lucky you weren't there, kid. One May 1976 The little poodle's name was Gigi. It huddled close to the body of the dead woman. Occasionally it shivered uncontrollably, although the temperature inside the house was a comfortable seventy-one. Now and again the poodle would whine for a few minutes. Sometimes it turned its head to lick the woman's still arm. It would not lick her face, because there was too much blood on it. The little dog was constricted with fear. It hadn't moved its bowels or urinated in nearly three days. The food in its feeding dish had grown hard and stale. Daylight came, and then nightfall, 
and then daylight again. Sometimes the little dog would go to one of the other dead bodies and stand there for a while.